Hi, this is Melinda Green, and I'm going to show you how to work my four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. This is a real four-dimensional Rubik's Cube, no cheating at all. It's the real deal. Um, but you're probably wondering, well, what is a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube? Well, what it is, is uh, it's an exact mathematical analogy of the three-dimensional Rubik's Cube extended into four dimensions. Um, one thing that comes out of that is that everything that you'd know about the, uh, the dimensionality of parts of real Rubik's Cube are all one, one greater in four dimensions. So in this case, uh, stickers are these, these little tiny sugar cube-like single colored uh, boxes. So we have three dimensional stickers. Faces in this puzzle are th these three by three by three arrays of hyper stickers and eight total Hyper faces surround a region of four space. Uh, and this is an exploded diagram so that you can see the internal structure. Ideally, this would all be smashed together uh, in the mathematically perfect uh, object, but uh, but this gives you a, this gives you a chance to visualize the entire four-dimensional cube and and to operate on it. Okay, so um, and if you look closely, you'll see that. You can only see seven out of the eight faces. This is due to the fact that uh, we use a perspective projection to take the four-dimensional geometry down into uh, three dimensions, and and that means that uh, some of the some of the faces would be turned completely inside out uh, in that projection and com and completely obscure the screen. So, inside out faces we simply don't draw. Uh, what I'm doing here is rotating around the three-dimensional projection. Uh, and that that means that the uh, the four dimensional eye space is is staying fixed, and we're just we're just sort of moving this this thing around just to to see what it looks like in our in our three dimensional space. But you can also do rotations in four space, which actually move the move the object around or move the the four dimensional eye point around. And this is this is what it looks like. And so now you see different colored faces coming and coming and going as they turn inside out. Uh, but there are eight different total colored hyper faces in this puzzle. Uh, and one of the neat things uh, I, I recently added is the ability to, uh, to, to click on, on any of these faces and to have it rotate to be the center of the, of the puzzle. So it's a, it's a lot easier to sort of square things up when you, uh, when you want to and then go back to, uh, go back to 3D rotating uh, in order to uh, uh, plan, your, plan your moves. Okay. So what does it mean to twist on a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube and what does it look like? Well, one way you can think about it is, um, and it is an analog to the, the 3D cube where you could imagine taking one of the faces off of the, the cube, turning it in any direction you like, and sticking it back on the cube. The equivalent to that in, in four dimensions is that you can take any one of these, these faces, um, remove it from the, from from the view, rotate it into any way you can ro orient a box, and then drop it back into uh, into that that place in its in its new orientation. Uh, those operations take neighboring stickers off of neighboring faces, um, which is how the puzzle gets scrambled. And I'll show you what uh, what a what a twist looks like. Uh, here we'll go into twist mode. We use this little pointing device that uh, that. They can point at the individual stickers. Uh, these are the actual user interface elements. This is how you twist on a on a face: is to identify um, one sticker on that face, and then imagine the axis that goes through that sticker and the center of its um, of its three-dimensional uh, uh, hyperface. And the and that face will will rotate around that axis, taking with it one slice of its neighbors. It's easiest to see this happening in the, in the the center face because all of the twists uh, can make sense to you as normal three dimensional rotations. So here's a ninety degree rotation. Four of them bring it back to back to where it started. You can also rotate about. Uh, edge pieces. Those are 180 degree twists. Oops, too many there. And also uh, 120 degree rotations, which uh, which rotate around the, uh, the the corners. And three of those brings you back to start. 
All right, so that's probably pretty scary, but um, it's really actually pretty intuitive after you after you play with around play around with it for a while. Uh, the best thing to, to do with this uh, with this puzzle is to try a try having the, the puzzle give you a, a small number of random random scrambling twists, and then you try to figure out how to how to undo them. Uh, I don't know if you can read these buttons, but uh, they say scramble one, scramble two, scramble three. So uh, first, just start with with one random twist, um, then maybe put it in in 3D mode to, to, to see what's what's happened here and what needs to happen to fix it. Uh, well, clearly you can see that the um, this slice of uh, of blues here in the middle needs to go onto the blue face out here uh, and, and replace the the purple slice here that belongs in the middle. In other words, they need to swap positions. Uh, that means that we've got a, a 180 degree twist involved. Um, and uh, and so to, to make it a little easier to, to visualize which which sticker to click, which which access to, uh, uh, to, to twist on, it's best to, to try to identify the face that the twist is happening about, the center of the, the twist itself. Um, I, I can tell that it's this it's the salmon colored face here. So let's bring it to the center and and then it'll start to make sense. And you, you'll need to experiment to figure out oh, which is which face is the center of any twist. And if you bring it to the center, then uh, you, you'll find it's really not that that difficult to uh, to figure out what to do. Okay, so now we we see we need to swap these these two slices of, of blue and purple over here. Um, and so that's that just means it's a it's an edge twist uh, along this this center face. Put it back in twist mode. Pick this edge piece here. And in the case of 180 degree twist, doesn't matter if I rotate left or right, uh, we end up with the same the same picture. And you hear the beep, which says that it's solved. Okay, so let's let's do that a few more times just so you can get used to it. Um, here's a twist. Uh, you can see that the salmon face needs to go into the middle, the red face needs to go down to here, and the cyan face needs to go to the invisible face, which also has uh, a slice of uh, yellows that need to slide in here at the top. So, so the rotation is going mostly downward like this and out, and, it, and you can begin to see that it's a rotation about this brown face. In fact, I'll even do it in place at first, and then we'll do it over again in the center, and you can see the difference. So, so I know from experience that it's it's this. Let's see, it's, it's this uh, this axis here, and this will be a counterclockwise twist, and there it is. Um, we put it back where it was, like this. Okay, now this time I'm going to uh, click. The brown face and bring it into the middle, and and then from there you'll you'll see um, how how simple it is to to do the actual twist. Um, the key thing is to watch for this watch for this sticker that's highlighted on the on the side of this brown face, and look to find where it's going to be when it ends up in the middle. Okay, here we go. All right. So if you're watching, then you will realize it's it's this axis, this skewer that goes through the central face this way. And it just needs to rotate all of these four slices in that counterclockwise direction. So I'll click this button, and there it is. Okay, um, let's do let's do one more, and see how that goes. Uh, which face is being uh, twisted? Well, it's it's the red face. Uh, let's bring it in so you can see that. Uh, and what needs to happen? Well, let's see. Pinks need to go over there, the blue goes over there, and the purple goes over here. So this is a 120 degree rotation right down this axis that we happen to be looking at. And there it is. Um, okay, now let's really go out on a limb. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to undo two, two random scrambles. This will probably take a little while, but, um, but you'll probably enjoy, enjoy watching it. Okay, so what's happened here? It really only looks like one twist happened. Um, I guess it's not supposed to perform more than one twist on the same random face. Um, so uh, let's just uh, solve it the easy way. It's on the brown face, I can tell. And what needs to happen is a 180 degree 
twist about this axis. I know I'm going a little fast, but we'll get this get this one fixed and go for two scramble two scrambles. Okay, here we are now. Uh, what looks like quite a quite a mess, but it's probably not as bad as it looks. The key is to find the the first twist. Once you once we get that right, the second one will be uh, pretty easy as you as you as you've seen. Um, so we're looking for something that we can improve on the puzzle that won't mess up anything else. Um, the, um, I think the first twist probably, well, it could involve this cyan face or it might actually involve the, the outermost face or the invisible face. Let's bring the cyan into the middle and see if that, if that shows us anything, anything useful that we can do. Um, okay, well, I could fix the cyan face by, by rotating, twist uh, by twisting this face onto here. Is that going to break anything up? It'll, it'll move a slice off that face, but that's also, that's also just fine. So let's let's try to do that. Um, it'll be a rotation around the purple face. Let's bring it into the middle to make it easier to see. Now put it in twist mode around this vertical axis and that will be counterclockwise. Okay, um, did that help us? I don't know, let's find out. Uh, difficult to tell. Um, well, let's just see what else is there we can fix. Um, well, this, this slice here, which has only three reds in a row and a couple rows of blue, clearly needs to go onto that back blue face there. So let's do another twist here. Am I just undoing what I did before? I'm, I'm not sure, but let's just see what happens. Okay, now it's definitely an improvement. That was uh, those two twists uh, together undid the, the, the second of the two random scrambles. Now all I need to do is, is finish the last one and that one, let's see what needs to happen. Red needs to come over here, purple needs to go to the middle, and blue goes to there, so it's a 120 degree rotation. Um, about which face? It's difficult to see. I think it's the cyan face. Okay, so what did I say? Um, so red, purple, blue, those are those faces in the back, so it'll be about this central corner here. 120 degrees to the left, and there it is. Okay, so so that's that's mainly what the, the program is for. You can also have it completely scramble the the puzzle and and attempt to solve it if you want to. I, I do not recommend that you that you try to solve the full puzzle on this platform. There's no ability currently to save log files or to implement macro moves. Um, you should use the desktop version of Magic Cube 4D, and uh, and that has all the tools you would you would want to to attempt a uh, an assault on the on the full puzzle. Just think of this puzzle as uh, the pocket edition or a uh, or a practice mode that you can use when you're out and about. Um, and uh, and what else can we do? Oh, and you can also have the the puzzle solve itself. There's a, a solve button here. Uh, it'll take a while on the, to solve the, the full puzzle, but it's kind of fun to watch. You can, uh, you can even continue to rotate the object around while it's, while it's doing that. You can even rotate in, in 4D. Uh, these are just viewing changes. It's not really changing the state of the puzzle. Uh, it's, uh, let me straighten it up again. There we go. Now it's almost finished. And there it is. Uh, so anytime you, you get stuck, if you, you, you attempt two random scrambles and you, you, you don't know what to do, uh, just click the, click the solve button or, um, or really just click uh, uh, another scramble button. Say if there's like three random scrambles and you don't like it, you want to try one, you just click one random scramble and, and there you go. So, so that's pretty much it. Magic Cube 4D, you can solve a, uh, an actual four-dimensional Rubik's Cube on, on Android, and uh, hopefully in the not-too-distant future, I'll port the, the, the full functionality and, that, 
as a uh, as an Android tablet app, and uh, and hope you uh, hope you have fun and uh, sh and share this with your friends. See you.